Hi everyone and welcome to the first prep video of section 2. This is the prep video for lesson 10, our inventory prep, and we'll spend most of our time probably talking about inheritance. There will be some other topics I'll cover as well. This series has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors. That said, let's make a start. So in this tutorial, we'll be creating our inventory and item structures. We'll go over what a structure is in just a moment. We'll be setting up our interface communications between the player and the items in the world. And we've already explored interfaces, but we will touch on interface events instead of interface functions. And then we'll be creating our item master, which is a parent class and a test item in today's tutorial. And that's where we're going to spend most of our time talking in this prep video on what a parent class is and inheritance. But first, we'll start with structures. So structures. These are really simple. We've worked with them before. This is a note. A structure is a collection of usually different data types. The ones we've worked with previously were all the same data type. They are related. So while they are, might be a bool, a uh, float, a what have you, the reason they're grouped together makes them what the, is their relation. So we're going to have bools, we're going to have text, we're going to have a texture, we're going to have a whole bunch of different things in our structures. They are related because they define our item and they are held together. And this is for ease of access. Also, it makes it saving stuff down the road easier as well. Now, as I've already said, we've used them. Vectors and rotators are actually F vector and F rotator. F, by the way, stands for structure. F is the identifier for a structure in UE4 C++. So an F vector and F rotators are structures of three floats. Each have three floats in them. So we have already used them. A structure can hold other structures. This is called nested structures. Um, we won't be doing this, at least yet. We will be doing it down the road for our saving system, most likely. But... A way to think about this is, you know, you might want to store your items rotation in world. Well, you're going to store all your item data, and then you might store your rotation, which is a structure inside of that. I know in the um, Souls-like video I had up ages ago, which I need to rebuild that project as well, the weapons had structures within structures based on the type of weapon, and certain things would be populated. So it's perfectly fine to have a structure within a structure. As a side note, um, and this is what I call best practice, I guess, it is better to do your structures in C++. You don't have to learn much C++. You literally just have to learn how to make a structure. And the reason for this is I've heard from numerous people, though I myself have never experienced this bug, that structures and blueprints sometimes glitch out where if you add an element to a structure, it erases all other um, instances of that structure. So if we have 50 items where we've defined their structures, we define the values of their structure, and then we decide, oh, you know, we missed something. We want to add another element to this structure. Um, I have heard that that will erase the 50 instances that were filled in earlier. I have never experienced that. I have added things to structures, but oh dear God, I can only imagine what that the feeling is like and all the the heartache that goes with it um so i do recommend doing them in c plus plus we will not be doing that for this tutorial and just remember when you do make a structure in ue4 c plus plus that you need to attach it to a u object otherwise it is not handled by garbage collection all right next let's talk about interface events we've already played with interfaces but doing this with just functions now we are going to do events so an interface event is set up the same way as everything else. We use the same interface. In fact, we will be using the iPlayer character interface we created in video nine. The only difference is with an interface event, you don't add a return node. That is how you say this is going to be an event. There is no return node. How you implement them, however, is slightly different. There is no listing of that interface event on the left-hand panel, assuming you have the default layout under interfaces. You have to right click on the event graph, type in your interface events name or the function name, and then find the add event version of it. It'll have multiple versions, by the way. There'll be a message version, 
Um, there'll be, I can't remember the other version, and there'll be an add event version. You want the add event version to implement it. You can use the other ones to call the event. All right, so this is all really simple. Now let's get into the main thrust of today. Let's get to the main show. And that main show is inheritance. As I mentioned in video nine's prep, we've already worked with this. Our player character inherits from character. Character inherits from pawn. Pawn inherits from, I, I have to have the list in front of me. I don't remember these lists. You're not expected to remember these lists either. There's a reason why documentation exists. Just to stress that. You don't need to memorize everything. So we are going to create our own system of inheritance in moving forward in this section. Now, what is inheritance? Well, inheritance allows a child, yep, to inherit, again, yep, from its parent. The, these are very, very obvious terms here. Literally, it is what it sounds like. A child, which is a child class, inherits from a parent. So, so far, our player character inherits from character. Character inherits from pawn. Everything the pawn can do, a uh, character can do. Everything the character can do, our player character can do. So if this is all that you understand of, of what, what's going on with inheritance, that's fine. This is the base concept that you need to understand. I'd rather you get the basic concepts than all of the nuances that go into this. The rest will come with time. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Sorry, my teacher's coming out in me. Now, as I said, in other words, that anything the parent can do, the child can do too. Now, this is a one-way street, thankfully. Otherwise, anytime we added thing, something to a child, the parent class would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the way that we're gonna work with inheritance a tiny bit, the way we're gonna avoid doing a hard load on our item master in our other classes and in our inventory system as well, is by getting the parent class instead. If it was a two-way street, if the parent could do what a child could do, then we would have a lot of problems with that. Things would become exponentially bigger and bigger and bigger until they didn't work. So only a child can take on the traits of a parent. A parent does not take on the traits of a child. So how are we gonna do inheritance? Now I'm gonna give an example on the next slide to be very clear. This might not actually be the way we are structuring things. I had a limited amount of space on my screen to work with and still have this readable. So we are going to create an item master. Under that, we might have three or four different masters, an equipment master, a food master, a utility master, or a weapon master. Now, it might end up being three where it's equipment, resource, and weapon. So we have these masters. Now, the masters are not things we place in the world. They just store things relevant to that. So item master is gonna store everything that's gonna be common across all items in the game. All items are gonna have a mesh. All items are going to have a collision box. All items are going to have a name. All items are going to have a description. All items are going to have a weight. That is stored in the item master. The equipment master is going to store anything related to equipment only. You know, it's going to have information about slot. So when I say slot, like what equipment slot goes in, head, body, legs, arms, what have you. Weapon will, will have the same, you know, different types of weapons. So, you know, is this a melee weapon? Is this a uh, firearm? What have you. And so each of these are gonna have their own children. And in my example, the three uh, the three sort of sub-master setups, our equipment master and our weapon master go directly into our items. The equipment master goes, say, into flashlight. Our weapon master goes into ax. We could also have mother, more items under, I was gonna say more, and I mixed more and other together. Mother is what came out. That was interesting. Um, so the equipment master and the weapon master could have more, it could be, Equipment master has flashlight, shield, body armor, um, leg armor, head armor, what have you. Weapon master could be axe, sword, pistol, etc., etc. Our if we do this three sort of submaster approach, our resource master will be split into say food master and utility master. Then our utility and food master will have their own children, where we have say a herb or meat under the food master, and our utility master might have tree wood debris, which is actually something we will have, by the way, batteries. Now again, I, I might not have a resource master. I might just do the food and utility master and then have them each have their children as direct items. There are different ways to approach how you set up your inheritance. And that's kind of what we're gonna talk about moving forward in the rest of this video. So 
Oh, sorry. Actually, I have one thing to say before that. Let's say you don't like what the parent is doing. You don't want the child to be doing the same thing because the parent's a little bit of a brat, and you don't want the child to turn into a brat. I can't swear, clearly, so assume I'm swearing instead. Well, you know what? We have some good news. We can override the functions and methods in the child, and we will be doing this, actually. So anything the parent does, we get access to, we can change that. All that means is though that when that gets called, it's calling it in the parent, when we run it in the child, it will run the child's version of it. And we can change the values of variables because we inherit variables. And in fact, that's the entire predication of why we are doing this. In this series, we will be doing both. All of our items will override the item master settings of the item details, one of the structures we're making. Like I said, we're gonna have a name, we're gonna have an icon, we're gonna have an item weight, we're gonna have a description, among other things. But not all items are going to have the same name, weight, description, icon. They are, that is declared in the item master. The actual items themselves will override this by giving them their own values. And then, for example, some items will have different box collisions, will have different pickup of or override, sorry, will have different pickup or collision events that happen. And so we will override our pickup or collision event. So yeah, we, we have a lot of flexibility, but we just want to make sure that, you know, we can call them easily. That, that's where this inheritance part comes in. Because the parent has it, all the children have it. The children can enact them differently but we can still call it the same way. We can still make this event activate in the same way. That's, that's the key here. All right, now let's get on to the part I would thought was next. I forgot what order I did these slides in clearly. So how do you know uh, what your class structure should be? When I say structure here, I'm talking about your inheritance structure, not an actual structure. And it's a good question. <laughs> I really, really sometimes sit there pondering this myself. Myself, I'm plural people now. And, and the answer really is the six P's. And ignore my semi-joke on the screen. The six P's stand for uh, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance or something like that. I know it's a bit of a um, non-answer, but it is, it is really the answer. You plan, you plan, you plan, you plan, you think things through. You plan, you plan, you plan, you think things through. Now, I'm gonna have a caveat to that in just a moment, don't worry. So uh, I'm being serious, draw it out, write it out, think what common features things uh, will have. Think about why my utility and food master on the last few slides were both resource children or children of the resource master. So for example, what do food items and construction items have in common that no other items might have in common? And this is a mean question of me or from me. And now just to make this a little bit easier, Assume that the construction items are wood and the food items are herbs. By the way, this actually comes from section four of the tutorial. So despite any planning you do, despite any of this, you might make mistakes or there might be things you didn't think of, you know, best laid plans of mice and men. So like I said, the above example comes from my own realization that spawning volumes, the spawning system that I will be creating with you in section four had a flaw. Trees and herbs, which were of different types, one was a utility master, one was a food master child, so herbs came from food master, tree came from the utility, well, they both needed to be spawned, and the spawner was looking for a food master class, so it can spawn any of the children of food master. Well, trees aren't food. We didn't need any of the things about eating trees. We were going to use trees for construction, to build lodging. But we had to spawn them, and we had to spawn them in a particular way. And so, well, I had, to, I had a few options on how to handle this. So, depending on the situation, there are at least three options. By the way, I'm talking about my last recording of this, so it's probably going to be different, which is why I said I don't know if we're going to do the three or four um, approach. So the three options are, one, you build in a workaround. This is actually what I did in the original recording. So for the resource spawner in section four, the one option I went with this one was that it would accept both parent classes. It would look for utility child and it would look for the food master child. I would say, you know, I want the, the trees to spawn and I want these herbs to spawn. And that, that's one option. 
The other option is add a function or method to the parent. Now, this isn't always doable because in the original layout, food master and item master, or not item master, food master and resource master or utility master were direct children of item master. My weapon master and my equipment master did not need those functions. Yeah, sure, I could have just left them undeclared and defined them in, in the children, but eh. But then it's not always doable, let's be fair. It is just not always feasible. Option three is that you reparent one of the classes to the other one's parent, or you create a new parent class. So item master would have, say, resource master, and then you'd reparent both food master and utility master to the um, resource master per the example of the three child layout I showed earlier. So there are multiple ways to do this. Now, long version short, don't worry, there are solutions. Your, your planning might be perfect. It, if it is, congratulations, I'm impressed because I'll never get these things perfect. Um, I make mistakes, I have to iterate and change things, but don't worry, there are solutions. All right, that brings us through what we need to talk about for inheritance. That said, we will be getting started on our inventory system in the next video, or in this tutorial video. We will be creating our item master, we'll be creating a test item, and we will be making it so that we can confirm that when we collide with the item, then when there's a collision event, that it is detecting the player and is communicating with the player. That said, this video and this series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Quad Menson, Haynes, and Rian. If you've liked this video or this series, please hit that like button down below and make sure to hit the subscribe and notify bell so you know when our inventory tutorials are out. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the main tutorial and I hope that you have a wonderful day.